Hi everyone, this is Marianne and welcome to my channel. In this video, I would just like to share with you an unboxing and my first impressions of a glass pen that I got recently. Now I purchased the glass pen from Everything Calligraphy and I have a review of their store in my channel and I will link it down below. And together with the glass pen, I also purchased four or yeah, four different ink samples and I really like Everything Calligraphy because I think they're the only local online store that offers um, sample ink vials. And of course I get to have this chalk nut and I've noticed that in this particular package they sent me the biggest size which made me happy. And I've already cut the video to the unpacking of the actual glass pen and this is how it came. It came bubble wrapped in I think four different layers of bubble wrap. Um, this is actually a bubble wrap roll. This is one sheet of bubble wrap that's been used to roll the entire glass pen around which is understandable because glass pens can shatter. And here is the glass pen itself. This is the packaging that it comes in. It says Roarer and Klinger Leipzig Co. And then something in German. And it says Glass Schreiber, which means a glass pen. And it's just a plastic tubing. And it comes with a cap on one of the ends. And the cap is made of black plastic which pops off quite easily and here finally we have the actual pen in our hands. Now I got this in the blue and gold variant. You can see that the stripes are two different shades of blue and a little bit of black and there are gold flecks or gold glitter embedded inside the barrel of the pen and it looks like there's another glass tube inside that barrel and here is how it looks with the flash. I chose the blue and gold because they are the colors of my college alma mater and I have a vlog about my deserted college campus in my channel and I will link it down below. But there is another variant of this pen in Everything Calligraphy. It is called the Blue and Rot which sounds strange but actually it isn't because it only means blue and red. And this is the nib of the pen. It has flutes in them or grooves and those are what holds the ink. And if you go back to the black plastic cap, it actually has a bit of foam inside of it because that is going to protect the point of the glass pen and you put it inside the packaging that way. I think it's pretty neat. And to try out this pen, I've decided to use this ink. It's from a sample ink vial from Everything Calligraphy. The color is Gold Antiqua and it's from Robert Oster. And I'm just using the Midori MD paper that I got from an, an A5 notebook that I have. I also have a review of the Midori MD A5 notebook in my channel and I will link it down below just in case you missed it. One thing that we have to remember about these glass pens is that they don't really write very evenly. They give your handwritten notes this kind of vintage and even look and that's why I chose the Gold Antiqua colored ink to test this pen out with so that you can see that vintage effect or appeal to this sample. This writing sample is actually an excerpt from H.P. Lovecraft. It is something that he said about what constitutes a true ghost story. I am a big fan of H.P. Lovecraft and I have his Necronomicon and I have had it for years and years. I think what I have now is a new copy that I have purchased only a few years ago because the copy that I've had since, oh, I think college has been um, battered already because I kept rereading it. So I think it's only fitting that I use a quote from H.P. Lovecraft to give a sample of this, um, of how this glass pen writes. 
the, the look I'm going for is something vintage -y and old. But, you know, of course, thinking about it now, I think I should have chosen an ink color that is closer to blood <laughs> rather than this gold Antigua one from Robert Oster. And after writing down that entire quote, this is the ink that is left on the flutes or the grooves of the nib of the glass pen. And then I just swished the nib around in a paper cup of clean water and then I wiped off the water from the nib with a tissue. Glass pens are very, very easy to clean. That's why um, people prefer to use them when trying out ink samples because you don't have to keep flushing them out. You just have to swish them around in water and then wipe them off with a, a dry tissue. Now let's try to see how long a single dip of ink lasts when writing with this glass pen. I've gone ahead and dipped the nib into the ink, but I've only dipped it until halfway up the nib. I didn't want to dip the entire nib into the ink because I didn't want the ink to come gushing out of the tip of the pen into the paper. I wasn't actually sure how long an entire um, half nib, so to speak, would last writing this way and I wasn't really sure what to copy so I just made figures of eight but I sped up the video so you won't have to wait a really, really long time because as you can see, that single dip lasted a really, really, really long time and granted, the lines that the pen is laying down are no longer as thick or as vivid in color as the first several lines or the first few lines but there is still color and the writing is still legible so I still consider it to be an actual output from a glass pen. Writing from this glass pen did not feel smooth. It did not feel as smooth as writing with a good found pen. It certainly felt quite scratchy but most dip pens are scratchy. The dip pens that I have used, the ones with the metal nibs, almost all of them are scratchy. So this glass pen being also a dip pen, I kind of expected it to be scratchy. But to tell you the truth, the scratchiness only added a little bit more to the vintage appeal of the writing experience with the glass pen. My only complaint about this glass pen is that maybe the grip section or the part where I actually grip the pen with my fingers was too narrow that after a while, after a few lines of writing, my hand started to feel crampy so it was kind of uncomfortable to keep on writing the figures of eight and it, you can even see that in some parts the figures of eight started to become more uneven than usual and that's because my hand was already cramping because of the very very narrow um, grip portion of the glass pen. And then I've already gotten to the end of the page and the ink was not yet completely used up on the nib of the glass pen. So I turned the paper over and then continued writing the figure of eight. And I went on and on and on until in this final line where the ink actually stopped flowing. There, the ink has finally stopped flowing after a whole bunch of writing and I wiped off the remaining ink without swishing it in the glass of water and as you can see there's only very little ink left on the tissue. There's almost nothing really. So that's a lot of writing for a dip pen with just one dip of the pen in the ink. That's a lot of writing and I think that this pen is going to be quite useful and I actually like it and I like the scratchiness of it. It adds to the vintage kind of writing experience and I am definitely going to find good use for it when I make my ink sampler book which I will of course make a video of again and share with you guys. And those are my impressions of this glass pen 
by Rohrer and Klinger, which I purchased from Everything Calligraphy for 1,200 pesos, which converts to about 24 US dollars. I actually like this pen and early on I think I can say that I recommend it. And that is my video for you today. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye.